This episode of Selling with Social is brought to you by the 10th Annual AAISP Leadership Summit, where the sales community comes together to learn, share, and network. Join Vangresso and your sales peers April 3rd through the 5th, 2018 in Chicago by visiting bit.ly forward slash AAISP2018 and use the code LEADERSHIP1095 at registration. And now to selling with social. Everybody can learn something from everyone, I think. And especially like newer hires, I see them come in, they're kind of timid because maybe they've had the same experience. Like they, they were at another company and they just felt like they could never approach. So I get that. I'm like, no, come on in, man. And ask them about what they've been doing. And I might learn something from them. I'm sure I will. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Selling with Social, the podcast that helps marketers increase marketing qualified leads, sales reps to shatter sales results, and sales leaders to grow as leaders. Each show, we interview sales, marketing, and social media practitioners, leaders, and influencers to help you connect, close more deals, build stronger relationships with clients, and improve your sales productivity. I'm Mario Martinez, Jr., You're now listening to Selling with Social. Greg, the man, Holmes, welcome to Selling with Social today, today's podcast. I'm super pumped, man, that I have the privilege of interviewing you, the head of sales here from Zoom, the amazing collaboration company. So thank you for joining me, my friend. Hey, thank you for having me. I think it should be Mario, the man, Martinez. That's the alliteration is a little bit more uh, appropriate. But uh, no, I'll take to be that. Here. It's, it's my pleasure. And I had so much fun in Tahoe with you last week. I thought I'd, I'd bring a, a little Tahoe back. It looks like you're on the water yourself. So. On the boat. Yeah, for those of you that are listening in right now, uh, I'm sitting on the boat here and Greg is sitting still back at Tahoe right now. And we've got some beautiful, amazing backgrounds. And, and Greg, if you see me moving every once in a while, it's because the waves are just really thrashing against the boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're always on the move. <laughs> yeah, always on the move. But this feature, I must tell you, for those of you listening in, Greg Holmes is the head of sales for Zoom.us one of the best collaboration companies out there, period, hands down. We love the platform. And what I love most about this for all the sales folks and sales leaders listening in, every prospecting meeting that I open up with, Greg, I open up with this background right here of me supposedly sitting on the yacht. And almost nine out of 10 times, leaders say, whenever I'm meeting with them, like, hey, where, where are you, by the way? Are you, are you on a boat? <laughs> That's awesome. It's the best. I don't know. Yeah, is it is, is it kind of your vision board too? It's like someday you wanna you wanna be there for real. Technically, I, technically, I don't want the yacht, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot to deal with. I guess you can hire. Much work. You, yacht, you can hire people to deal with the yacht. That's true. Maybe one day I'll get to that position where I could hire somebody <laughs> who will clean up the yacht. But nonetheless, it, it is a great icebreaker for the virtual backgrounds. Whoever came up with this idea from your company, simply brilliant. But listen, enough about me talking about how wonderful Zoom is because I love the platform and, and we can record all of our podcasts there. Do us a favor, my friend. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been with Zoom, what's your role, what, your background in terms of corporate history. Definitely. So I've been at Zoom just over five years. I joined January 2013 company was just getting started. Our founder had uh, been developing the technology for about two years, starting in 2011. And we had met each other at our during our time at uh, WebEx together. So that's how we first met. He reached out in 2012 and said, hey, I need someone to come help build a sales team and get this company going. And it was you know perfect opportunity, and a blank canvas chance to really build from scratch. So I, I did not hesitate, jumped into our humble beginnings in Santa Clara, California and started building. So it's been a Amazing, amazing ride. And yeah, I, I've been in this industry, collaboration industry, as I mentioned, at WebEx for about 11 years, combined WebEx, Cisco. And before that, I kind of had a different path. I, I started as a fourth grade elementary school teacher right out of college and enjoyed doing that for three years. And then kind of went into the, you know, the tech industry and started, you know, then got into sales and sales leadership. So it's been a, it's been a fun journey so far. So that explains your cool cat demeanor in high stress situations. <laughs> I'm serious. There's no doubt. I mean, it definitely prepared. When you have to, as a teacher, I remember those first days closing that door and staring at those. I think we had the 
25 kid limit that during those days keep class sizes down but just staring them all in the eye man oh man these are all mine i gotta i gotta get these kids a chicken and uh, learning and growing and a lot of pressure yeah so i think it, it definitely helped me get to this even keel mentality that's really been helpful in sort of a rocket ship kind of company experience and just Never getting too high, never get too low and keep the team steady. I think, yeah, it it definitely helped for sure. The trick to the trade then is for someone like myself that is always running on high, right? Like I'm always in like, you know, should be in sixth gear and I'm I'm sitting there running, revving the engine at third gear right there, right? You need to to be a substitute teacher. I need to be a substitute teacher. (laughs) There you go. That's exactly right. All right. For those of you listening in, you know my personality. You'll know that's actually, I'm only half kidding with the fact that I probably do need to dial it down somehow, some way, but So you actually told something that I didn't know about you at all. And I don't think I would have ever known that by looking at your social profiles. But tell us one thing. I always love asking my guests since you just told us about being a teacher. One more thing. Tell us one more thing that we wouldn't know about you by looking at your social profiles. Okay, one thing. Well, I mean, you made me think because you were talking about my wife earlier when we first got together. And um, I think I... I had my crowning moment, frankly, in my life of uh, planning how I was going to ask her to marry me. So uh, we had, we'd met in college. At, uh, we both went to UC Santa Barbara. And I mean, we kind of lost touch, but had same similar circle of friends. We both moved back to the Bay Area and started dating again. And when it got to be that point where I wanted to ask her to marry me, she was working for a law firm at the time that had an office in Santa Barbara. So I called her boss and said, hey, can you set up a fake like trip to go see a client? And send her down there. And I drove down. And so we went to, uh, there's a restaurant called The Palace down in Santa Barbara, a great Cajun place if you ever get down there. But had them set up that she was going to meet this client at The Palace. And so she's sitting there and I'm hiding in the back. And I came out finally when I saw her sit down and I got down on my knee and she's like, wait, wait a sec, what are you doing here? Like, Jonathan's going to show up. You got to get out of here. And I'm all, there's no Jonathan. She's like, what? She just, she couldn't get it. She couldn't figure it out for a little bit. And here I am trying to ask her to marry me. And I'm like, no, seriously, it's not real. I'm here. You're, you are Jonathan. I am Jonathan. I'm Jonathan. <laughs> I'm Jonathan. So um, I don't know. I'm frankly, I'm kind of a free flowing, a little more creative. I'm not a huge planner and organized. So that was like my best sort of planning and just getting something down detailed and a total surprise to her. That was like my peak of that type of action. So that was, I don't know if a lot of people know that story, but that was a pretty good one. I love it. So, so there is a little bit of romance inside of you that you could plan something out of the surprise. And the best part was, is she thought that it's a good thing that she didn't think that you were Jonathan, like, you know, like <laughs> that she, she thought that she was really meeting a Jonathan client. <laughs> exactly. Right. Oh boy, that could have gone, yeah, that could have gone south fast. So Very fast, it's very fast. I love out. that story. It's great. It well, all worked out. Very, very good. Well, Greg, you guys over there at Zoom, you mentioned earlier that you were one of the first, you were the first a salesperson, if I'm not mistaken, and now you're as the head of sales of Zoom.us. How many salespeople and sales supporting cast members do you got? I think you said, told me it was about 400 or so? Yeah, a little over 400, including sales leadership, got an SDR team that is under under the sales org, and we've built a, a nice BDR team as well in the last about nine months. So yeah, it's about 425 at this point, all told. Fantastic. And you were numero uno, correct? Numero uno, yeah. It was. I still remember walking in on January, I think, 2nd. Eric had gotten me my own little unit to start hiring a few people. And I just remember Ethernet wires coming out from the ceiling that they'd run from the other office and just in there by myself, like, okay, what do we do here? How do we get this started? And wow. yeah, I kind of look back and see it now in offices across the globe. It's, it's I don't know, I, it's hard to, hard to imagine that it's gotten here. And, you know, we're just getting started too. That's the exciting thing. That's kind of gets me fired up driving in every day, knowing that, you know, it's been that amazing journey, but now there's this new phase and so much more to do that just keeps me going. You know, and it's not often that we speak to a, a lot of organizations who are having massive, tremendous success, right? I mean, like you guys have had some really amazing years. You guys have picked up some new rounds of funding that have just been, you know, astronomical, fantastic success in terms of customer growth, obviously going from five years ago from, you know, one sales guy and head of sales to now well over 400 people. Your growth trajectory, if I'm not mistaken, you're adding on a few hundred more by the end of this year, right? Right. Yeah, definitely. Just in sales. Yeah, we'll, we'll add a couple hundred, you know, maybe a little bit more in the plan. So yeah, there's no stopping now. 
it's that's, um, we got we got a big mountain to climb, and you know overall our market penetration we still have like I said still have a long way to go. And the good news is the market is accepting. We, we brought a great technology that you know people are I think really yearning for, frankly. And so there is an opportunity. So yeah, we definitely feel like we've got to be aggressive, hire more folks. There's plenty of companies to get to that with the current team we still can't touch. So yeah. you know, with hiring more people, bring on the right partners to help us as well. That's the strategy. Now, when you think about this level of success that you guys have had from a sales perspective and a delivery perspective, I, you know, there's, there's really two areas that you've got to think about. One is you've got to sell and two, you've got to deliver. And Zoom has become very well known for a phrase, which is making customers happy. Is that right? Did I get it right? Yeah. Well, or delivering we, you know, happiness. Deliver, delivering happiness. Exactly. Yeah. It's, you know, walk into our headquarters, it's on the front door and yeah, we've been touting it. Eric started town. He loved the Zappos CEO book, Delivering Happiness. I think that he's an avid reader. So he, I think he really picks up on things. And that was something that he attached to early. You know, it was bring a really simple, reliable, great quality solution, but wrap it up with happiness. That was like his vision. So we started beating that drum early on, obviously to customers, but it was also, you got to do it internally too. you know, walk the talk, not only to customers, but with each other to be authentically caring, you know, you can't just do it to one group and not be good to each other. So it's been, yeah, it's been a huge part of building the culture. And, you know, I've, we've just seen that, you know, you take a technology that's disruptive, that's great. But if you can also be disruptive in the way you approach people and deal with them and care about, genuinely care about them, that's becomes a, you know, that's the silver bullet. It's like, it's hard to be stopped when you put those two together. So Now, I know one thing that I thought was pretty amazing with Eric, your CEO, is I remember when I first came on board, there was some an issue or problem I had. And somehow, I I don't know how it got to Eric, but somehow it got to Eric. And he reached out to me and said, would you please call me on the phone so I could better understand this issue? And And I was actually quite surprised, right, that it had reached his level and that he reached out to understand what the issue was. And ever since then, he said, here's my cell phone number. If you ever need anything, call me. And it was surprising to me that the CEO of Zoom would do something like that. And I can't imagine that I was the first person that Eric has done that with, (laughs) right? Truly, he cares that much about the technology and the product that has infiltrated throughout the rest of the organization to wanting to make customers happy as well. Most definitely. Yeah, I don't, frankly, I don't know how he does it sometimes, like the the amount of time he makes available to, you know, interact with customers. And it it can be someone that's bought, you know, one license or maybe even using our free service. He doesn't differentiate, which has been, you know, just amazing to see. And that, that impact that everyone else in the company sees by him doing, I mean, he's walking the, he's walking the talk, right. And, you know, you better believe people notice that. And then that, I think that's huge. That builds that trust in the rest of the organization to really follow something like it and believe in this deliver happiness can really make a difference. So, yeah, I think to have a leader that emulates it and, and acts it every day. The entire executive team is on our, we have an info at zoom.us inbound you know, email a list that people can put in. There's other areas to put in normal standard questions, but sometimes people just hit that alias and we're all on it. We look at it and we'll sort of triage and figure out who's going to get back to it. But you know, it, it's also part, I think one of the other things that's really been powerful for us is to keep the organization really flat as far as not too many layers of leadership and delegation. And, you know, you need some of that as you grow, but, you know, to make sure everyone's got their you know, fingers on the pulse, I guess, of the business and is right there with the customer and the employees. So we really understand kind of what's going on through sort of the day-to-day vibe and, and address it as we need to. Now, one of the things you started talking about is really the culture that you've created internally. You said delivering happiness. You said not only is that an external thing in terms of how we approach our customers, but it's also something internally as well. And when you scale a company as fast as you guys have scaled, or you're growing a company as fast as you guys are growing, in order to be able to have success, you've got to have and you've got to have or build, then have the right culture internally within an organization. And I really, you and I spent time talking about some of the things that you guys are doing. And I think this is a great learning lesson for all the sales leaders, as well as the sales people who will one day be in that sales manager hat, right? And above, in terms of building a great culture that is around winning and really getting to know your fellow teammates. You talked about something that I thought just was pretty awesome and brilliant that you guys do. You mentioned the Zoom roulette. 
Do you remember that we talked about that? Yep, yep, yeah, definitely. Do me a favor. Talk to me about. And there's a whole series of items that we can go through here about the Zoom culture, but this one kind of stood out to me. Like, wow, I've never heard of that before. That's pretty freaking brilliant. Talk to me about Zoom Roulette and what that is. It's fun, and you know, it came from. We actually have a chief happiness officer, so it's a. Uh, it's one of our employees that just early on just sort of jumped out and wanted to do more and help drive this whole concept. And she became the Eric Calder, our CHO. And so she's built a whole happiness team. So every office has people that, you know, everyone's got to be involved, but there's folks that kind of help facilitate, set up community outreach type events or anything we're trying to do around this whole concept. And the Zoom roulette came about as an idea to bring, as our team started growing and we started putting offices in London and Sydney, and it wasn't just the U.S. now, you know, a way to really make sure we stay together as employees and people part of this journey. So Zoom Roulette, essentially, we do it once a month. Actually, I think it's twice a month because we do different time zones. But essentially, and it's all the employees, actually, not just sales, but you can certainly start there. Essentially, we do one Zoom meeting. We invite everyone into the Zoom meeting. Everyone joins. And then we have this breakout room capability. So sort of welcome everybody in give everybody a topic to bring to their breakout session. And it can be as simple as like, what was your most embarrassing moment? And so go ahead and round Robin through that. So then they randomly generate the breakout session. So the zoom allows you to just, you know, click that. I want 10 breakout rooms, you know, however many people in each. And so you end up being with people that more than likely you don't, probably don't see or interact with on a day-to-day basis. And then you get to break the ice with one of those, the questions that you're given to just just have an opportunity, like I said, to spend some time with all these people that are working hard and stay aligned to the overall journey and vision we have. And I just think it's created so much more connection and closeness with the team inside. And like I said, that word alignment is huge. Just everyone being on the same page of what we're trying to do. We've seen great results from it. It's fun to do, right? It's just popping in and learning something new about someone in tech support or customer success or You know, even Eric jumps in and (laughs) you get to hear his stories and most embarrassing moments. So it's a really cool way to facilitate that. So the idea then is to facilitate getting to know your teammates, remote, on-site, those that are remotely supporting you. Maybe they're in accounting, maybe they're in finance, maybe there's pricing that just basically get to know everybody so that you can build a culture of family within the organization. Is that, is that kind of the idea? Yeah, I think you hate it. I mean, it's sort of perpetuate that concept of genuinely caring and have genuine curiosity about the people you're, whether you're interacting with from the customer standpoint or in this case, internally. And I think that just helps generate, we just generate a lot of great energy and momentum around that by doing things like that. So yeah, that's been a good one. I think I recommend I actually, we had talked about it. I sent the note out to our, we have a customer advisory board group chat and I sent the idea to them, asking, actually said, hey, this is something we do. I'd love to hear things you're doing in your company because I want to get more ideas too. I'm sure other people are doing things around that. But yeah, it sort of inspired me like, hey, we should share this out. It's a, it's a cool concept and it's really worked well for us. So. Oh, it's a great concept. How many people do you have in these breakout rooms at a time? They've been like 10 to 15 usually ranging. So, I mean, everyone's invited. and I'm not going to say everyone joins every time, but yeah, it's usually about 10 to 15 will be in each of the individual breakouts. Wow. That's awesome. It gave me an idea to be able to, even amongst a small company like ourselves, right? Vangresso with 20 some odd team members, we work together. We're really running hard, right? As we build and grow and scale, it's a great idea to be able to get to know folks and ask various questions. And the fact of the matter is, is that you guys actually took and created, I think you called it a happiness crew. Yes. Yeah. Happiness crew. And you've got your chief happiness officer, right? That someone's focused on, on really driving, you know, building better relationships internally. Because let's face it, to grow and scale a culture as fast as you guys are growing, you have to do something differently, right? Because you can bring a lot of people on and not have everybody on the same exact page in terms of really the personal aspect of working together and getting to know one another. Sometimes it's all around just business. And I think that's where you guys have done a really good job at in terms of scaling the team. Yeah. And I think Eric, like I said, it it starts from the top and you know, then everyone kind of builds upon it, but I think that's been his vision, right? This is a journey and it's about doing something to change the world. And yeah, you can get too caught up in the numbers and just executing and the dollars and cents around it. But I think he's always felt it's gotta be something more about that. Like let's, 
let's do this and do this the right way by caring and having respect and integrity and just always doing the right things while you're selling Zoom. <laughs> so, you know, like putting that together, just and then, that, yeah, I think ultimately we've, we've done a great job of keeping a, a large part of the team, not a ton of attrition. I got to believe that that has a huge factor in it. I mean, people like to be a part of something where they feel like they're cared about and they have the opportunity to really perpetuate that to other that just fills everybody's emotional tank. So it's been a, g- a great way to go about it. I love it. Well, I want to go into some of the other things that you guys have done to build and scale a great culture internally, as well as preparing the sales team for growth. And one of the things that we talked about was that I think is maybe a little bit unique for your sales culture is when you're onboarding new sales folks, you guys have a specific methodology of which you are using to onboard a sales team member, a new sales team member for the best and quickest optimal success. And before we go into that, we're going to listen to this message from our program sponsor. I'm super excited to share that Vingresso will be joining the AAISP and hundreds of sales leaders in Chicago for the 10th annual AAISP Leadership Summit, April 3rd through the 5th, 2018. In fact, I personally will be presenting and I want to invite you to join me. The Leadership Summit brings together sales leaders from around the globe for a learning experience unlike any other. Attendees will find workshops, group learning, a technology expo packed full of today's leading solution and service providers, and of course, the infamous annual Inside Sales Award Gala. To receive your deeply discounted rate, visit bit.ly forward slash AAISP2018. That's bit.ly forward slash AAISP2018. And use the code leadership1095 at registration for an amazing Vengresso only discount. So right before the program sponsor message, I talked about wanting to hear how you guys are doing things in terms of onboarding your salespeople. Talk a little bit about the program that you guys have put in place, Greg, to onboard your sales folks. Yeah, definitely. And there's a couple of things we're doing and frankly, they're in progress. Like we kind of trialed and tested some of these things in in a few areas and to uh, sort of prove out what we expected. So one of the things we've started to do and we're building upon as we've turned into our new fiscal year, we were doing a five-day new hire training, brought everyone here to headquarters. And generally from there, they do their five days and then they'd have a follow-on sort of enablement plan that, you know, kind of a lot of it was going back, shadowing with some of their teammates and starting to dig in, start practicing on the tools they need to use. But a lot of it's sort of on their own and just inter- trying to engage and follow a schedule. We just felt like those five days were great, but a lot of it is just more getting acclimated with Zoom and Zoom's vision and high level on the technology, meeting a lot of the folks on the executive team and the different departments. But it wasn't a lot around, hey, I'm a mid-market sales rep and what do I need to know to like be able to jump into territory and start being super productive as fast as possible? So we're starting this concept of boot camps. And so we, we started in our BDR teams after the five days of new hire. It's not always the next following week. We've done it both ways. And I'm not sure if there's a difference there really, but at least somewhere in the, in the near term, after those first five days, we then do another week where it's, then it's a week dedicated to that role. And it really shrinks down that learning curve and how quickly they can get productive if you can isolate those five days of, okay, let's look at the tools you're going to use as a mid-market rep or a BDR or a majors rep. And let's look at whether it's, you know, if you're a majors rep, How do you go about effective prospecting and coordinating with your BDR to get the best engagements? Just anything around being as effective as you can in that role. That's been the huge turn for us so far. And we expect that, you know, as you look at growing sales teams, like things like shrinking ramp times and getting productivity faster, it's it's obviously a huge impact to the numbers. So we think it's going to be big results for us this year. That's one of the things we've done a little differently. And the other is, frankly, this is very new. We're just launching it. So I can't tell you it's earth shattering yet, but we think it's going to make a big difference. We're calling it Elevate, but it's basically a peer-to-peer engagement campaign. We're starting it in sales, and I think ultimately we should do it with the whole company. But we're asking each of the folks in the sales org to meet with at least eight of their peers within a 
quarter period. And we built the tracking system and our enablement tool we have so they can go in and put in who they met with, create a quick video of things they learned, update some questions that are asked. But the idea is, you know, with such a growing team, you know, certainly we grow the leadership team to help coach and manage, but I don't think you're ever going to have enough if you just count on your leaders to be the coaches, inspires, the managers to help really elevate the level of your team. It's, you know, these folks are all super sharp and smart, just like I'm sure all the salespeople and all the other sales teams out there. So tap into that and really allow them to learn from each other and, you know, teach them some coaching techniques so they can do effective sessions. But yeah, the idea is we've set some parameters that you have to meet with each month. It should be at least one person who's been here less than six months. Then it's at least one person who's been here longer than six months. So you sort of mix that too. You should try to do it outside of your immediate team because likely you're probably doing a lot of that already. Yeah. And like I said, I think just by bringing people together, kind of like Zoom roulette, right? I mean, we just see simple things of just getting people to gather, interact and communicate just makes such a stronger team. This is a little bit more on learning though. Like either they've got to bring a topic to the table or they've got to listen to a recorded call that's been done and then provide some coaching, do a deal review. So there's like a list of about 10 things we give them that, hey, these are things you can do in your minimum of 15 minute engagement. So we're excited about it. I think, like I said, that that and some of the things we're doing in changing the enablement path will have huge impact on a, that scaling this team to the next level. So let me get that straight in terms of this concept of peer-to-peer engagement. First, it's mandatory meeting with three people is that you said a month or every every other at least it's eight per quarter figuring three three and two since yeah it's crunch time last last yeah. month we'll do a little less than but yeah eight over a 90-day period and it's someone with that's less than six months that's not on your team someone that's with greater than six months experience that's also not on your team and then the third person you said anyone it can be any executive that you're wanting to yeah we you can go outside the sales org meet with eric meet with head of marketing someone on the marketing team a csm just to get a little bit of mix too on best practices or how they're engaging with the customer so get a better perspective on you know the overall spectrum of the business which is a fantastic way, quite frankly, if, if you wanted to move up and around within an organization to get to know other executives to be on someone's radar screen, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, yeah. so, so as an example, if someone in the service support organization always thought about being a, you know, in sales, a BDR, a SDR, it would behoove them to schedule a meeting with you, bringing a topic to the discussion, but also at the same time, probably leaving with the thought of, hey, by the way, if I ever thought of going into whatever it might be, in this case, sales, what would I need to do? And that would be something that you could provide coaching on as a leader, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's a great example. I mean, these are, you know, I think it can, it's going to go a lot of different ways. And that's a good one. I, Frank, I didn't think as much around that. But yeah, I think it's going to be an opportunity for something like that. Yeah, I think we initially are thinking from at least a sales standpoint, it's just going to raise the game of all the sellers, right? You're going to, yeah. everyone's got their best practices or just the way they approach things. And we can learn so much from each other. So that's the idea. And we think it's, yeah, it's going to be a, be a big deal for the team. Interesting. Now, in many organizations, people are, many leaders try to isolate themselves or isolate the individuals that are on the front lines from really having that one-on-one time with any executive. That is not the culture that you're trying to foster. You're trying to foster a very open environment. And if somebody can get on your calendar, then by all means, then they're able to get on your calendar. I was like, are you not a, are you, you know, like the bigger you get in a lot of these organizations, it was very uncommon when I worked for a fortune 100 for me to be able to go up five levels, right? Like it just, it just, and those leaders who were in those positions oftentimes were like, who is this person coming to me? That's five levels below me. Right. <laughs> so, which I always thought that was just quite silly. I was because everybody eats and pees and poops the same exact way, but, but nonetheless, and by the way, I get to say that because it's my podcast. So yeah, yeah. I'll let you take that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me take that one. But you guys are not concerned about that in terms of a leadership style. You want people to be able to have happiness internally, right? And to be able to grow. And if they think that they can learn from you as an example, then by all means, let them get to you, right? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it goes back to what you said about Eric answering your email. And I mean, that same concept internally, right? It's like everyone's door is always open. I would say it's getting harder because of your, what you said earlier. It's not about, I would love to have a conversation with anybody in this company. I don't care what who they are, what department they're in. 
it gets tough just schedules and calendar. Like as long as I can get a, a spot, man, let's do it. I always tell people just grab five minutes. Let's talk for sure. Like everybody can learn something from everyone, I think. And especially like newer hires, I see them come in. They're kind of timid because maybe they've had the same experience. Like they, they were at another company and they just felt like they could never approach. So I get that. I'm like, no, come on in, man. And ask them about what they've been doing and I might learn something from them. I'm sure I will. And so, yeah, I think that's been a good part of the culture that, yeah, it's back to kind of being flat. And there's no, don't get caught up in your titles or egos and just we're all in this together. So the better you know each other, no matter who you are, it's, it's going to pay off. Yeah, I love that idea. And then of course your enablement process, I think that'll oftentimes what a lot of organizations are trying to do today is shorten the amount of time that someone is sitting behind a training program, right? And I remember the days of going two weeks. Watching videos and... Well, well, two weeks in classroom, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but a, lot of, a lot of organizations have cut that off because of the cost it, it incurs to house somebody for two weeks, right? And then fly them back for the weekend and then bring them back, you know, for the week, right? There's a lot of costs associated with that. And even when we get, went down to the one week long training programs, that also incurred a lot of cost, right? So a lot of organizations have moved that down to a virtualized environment or a couple days at corporate. But you guys are still holding strong to this kind of week-long training program. Is that right? Yeah. You know what? I feel like, I mean, we're on video so much, as you can imagine that, you know, I think there are those impactful times where you want to just be face-to-face and together and new hires won. I mean, some of these folks, especially different offices, won't be back to headquarters for a while and getting to meet Eric and Janine, our head of marketing, and just other folks that work in headquarters. A lot of the engineers are here, get a chance to go say hi to them. I mean, yeah, it's, I don't think we blink an eye because I think part of it is, like I said, we're on video so much. Those moments where you can bring folks together, I think it has that much more impact. And it's, yeah. we saw it, you know, like our holiday party, we bring everyone together for a holiday party. And it's like, it's this interesting phenomenon that like, like you see each other all day on video, but then all of a sudden you're actually with them together. And it's like, it takes it just to, it's hard to explain. It takes it to a whole new notch and, you know, you want to go out there and hug everyone, just get so fired up. So yeah, I think pick your spots and like we do virtual sales kickoffs. I just did our sales kickoff for our, we just kicked off our new fiscal year last week. We do it, kick it off over Zoom. But in the middle of the year, we do a bring everyone in sort of traditional sales kickoff because again, it's, you know, man, bringing people physically together. Obviously there's never replaced that. And I think if you're supplementing it through video throughout, then it makes, I think it makes that more powerful. That it does. And I want to talk a little bit about the power behind video. And tell me, I mean, you've said this several times now that you guys are constantly on video. You're turning, do you even ever have meetings with video not turned on? No, I, people, people think something's wrong. Like if your video's muted, like someone thinks something's wrong. Like what's going on? Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah it's like, no, it's like showing uh, up to work with a bag on your head. Yeah, right? Exactly. Like, it's the yeah. it's total sick second nature. So every, every meeting's just like, Frankly, the customers that have figured that part out, because there's still customers that buy Zoom and they think, you know what, it's more reliable, it's easier to use, and it was less expensive than my other tool, not thinking the video piece, but then you'll go come back to them in six months and they're like, oh my God, we're using like four times as much of this type of technology that we ever had before, because all of a sudden people like, this engagement is, that's how people are. I think we were all born to communicate that way with yeah. looking at each other and trying to do things together, not sort of behind a wall or something. So... Yeah, for like our all hands, you know, you'll get called out if they see you're like video muted or something. So you got you to be on, you got to show up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember one of the trainings that we did locally at your office on video. Everybody was on video screen and there was somebody there who was, it was middle of lunchtime and he was walking the treadmill at the same time. So it was great. It was Kirk, Kirk Bridges. And when I saw that, I was like, are you on a treadmill? He was like, man, we turn video on all the time. This is what we do, right? <laughs> It is pretty funny, yeah, because if you look at the gallery view, yeah, yeah, you can peck out, wait, they're in a car, they're on a treadmill. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Of course, that was lunchtime and made all the sense in the world for him to be on it. But, you know, a lot of companies have not adopted the use of video as their mainstream way of communicating, right? And here, you know, at Vangressa, we're all about video, as you know. I mean, like video has to be on in the meeting. And if it's not on, to your point, there's something wrong, right? Right. And we're a 100% virtual organization. We have no real estate, no office space whatsoever. And so as you think about the large organizations, the big fortune, say 200, 
it is not the common thing for a lot of folks to be on video. And I would challenge the leaders that are listening in, and, and you can say you agree with me or not, but I would challenge the leaders that are listening in. If you're not using video as a regular way to communicate, then you are not building trust. And there is a science that goes behind seeing someone's facial expressions, being able to hear voice modulation at the same time as gestures, at the same time as facial expressions. In fact, as you know, Greg, I won't even do a podcast if you don't have video turned on. Mm. I had a very senior level executive at a Fortune 100 company who was going to join my podcast that morning a couple weeks ago through audio only. And I said, I'm sorry, we can't do the podcast, right? Because it's not going to be the same experience for the for our listeners who right. are listening in. If you and I can see each other and we're seeing the dynamics, the show is going to be that much better. And it's the same internally when you're having a conversation. So do you agree? Do you think I'm on the right path there with my thought process? I do. I do. You know, and I think for companies like that, I'd say, because we talked about it a lot today, I think because at least from, from what I experience, I feel like a lot of them, they, if they haven't been on video a lot, they think they're thinking externally, like, ah, I don't know how my customers will take that. I'd say start internally, especially those big companies. That's, I mean, we were at that conference last week, some big companies there and like to a T, their biggest challenge was breaking down silos and getting people to communicate and move decisions faster. It was like, if you can start internally, start getting people to see each other, be present. I think you start to understand the impact and then it becomes more natural to take it to your clients, your partners, whoever else externally. So if there's a bit of a holdback on doing it, start internally, start doing the fun Zoom roulette stuff and see what happens as you start to get comfortable with it and see what kind of changes it brings about. And yeah, I think you build, to your point, you build more trust with the internal employees doing it. And then then certainly uh, you bring that externally as well. So. Uh, yeah, I think you're right on. If your sales reps aren't doing this already, Greg, but I think your sales reps should start selling to human resources and providing them some valuable content on, on how to break down barriers inside of organization. Simple trick. Turn on video. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. There you go. New target uh, for you guys to call. Help you. Yeah, no, you're right. So yeah, you talk about HR, like, I mean, every company, even, frankly, even the one uh, company I mentioned, I worked for the other web conferencing company, like 11 years. I think about the interviews I did there on the phone, you know, and then you could do the phone screen and you got to figure out, should we bring them in? And like, yeah. now it's like, how you don't do least, the, mo I think most companies do some sort of a screen, right? And how the how you don't do that on video now and just to be able to give it such a better read on a person, have a richer conversation. Yeah, interviewing is another one that, man, I hope everyone's doing it on video because it's, you know, we, I mean, we'll, we hire a lot of people and they never come to an office. Frankly, I tell every candidate, like, I'm ready to hire you, but I think you should go to the office for you. Like, feel the walls and walk in there and see if this feels like a place you're going to come and battle and feel great about every day. For us, I, I've met you on video. I'm feeling good about this, you know, so... I think you can get there, quite frankly, in most cases. So, And I, if I'm not mistaken, even your Zoom, the Zoom mobile, I feel like I'm, oh, this is like a commercial right now. For I you. know. Are we getting but, too, getting too Zoomy here? Maybe. No, no, no. But this, this is actually really good because this is about culture, right? This is about how to build and scale an organization. And you guys are living and breathing the technology. But back to what I was going to say was, is I, I feel like every time I connect via mobile device, by default, video is always what shows up on mobile. Now, I don't know if that's a setting that I've turned on or not, but every single time I show up, a video is on. And I always try to turn it off because I'll be like driving. <laughs> I don't want the video to be on at that time. But nonetheless, like, you know, I give this in part of my keynote presentations when I'm talking about the power of video, right? Using video in engaging with your prospecting messages or client building messages, right? And that's one way usually, like I'm sending a video to you, Greg, as an example, to connect with your prospect to you. But right. then there is turning video on in the sales process, right? And even if it's just one way, I've said this, I don't know how many times to sales organizations, even if they can see me, but I can't see them because they're afraid to be on video, yeah. That is way better than just being on an audio only because they can't see your facial expressions. They can't see your hand gestures. They can't see, they can't feel the passion the same way as you could feel that passion through voice. And I think that's, you know, to some extent, what has made you guys different in terms of your success, if I'm not mistaken, right? The prospecting cadences you guys had, we didn't get into that, but turning on video as a requirement to communicate with buyers 
like that has to be one of the reasons why you guys have had great success. Yeah, you bring up a great point because I think there, you know, you don't want to force video on your someone joins your meeting and you're right. By default, video fires up on desktop, mobile, and you can adjust those settings. So like I think a lot of our customers do, they'll do video on for the seller and off by default for their participant and the participant can pop it on if they like to. But I think even in that case, you're right. I mean, because if you think about it, both of you are, whether it's audio only, or even if you're sort of in a, a web conferencing room where it's you're sort of behind a, a bit of a wall there, maybe a thumbnail video, but no one pays attention to it. Even if they're on the, if the prospect's on the phone and you're on video, there's still that effect of, I feel like they're, they're, they see me. So honestly, it's like psychological. So I better pay more attention. If you're both on audio, the distractions around you and, and the ADD that most of us have or some form of it, you know, you're barely halfway in most of the time and, and so are they. But yeah, even if just the seller is on video, it puts that person on the audio. Like they, I think they feel like, oh man, they're right there. I better pay a little more attention to this call. We've seen that effect big time. So yeah, it can help there for sure. Yeah. And I, I like love things those- like this. You brought up the virtual background, like for, I don't know, this is like 50 bucks to put that thing behind my seat. All the reps have it here. But man, like you said, just the icebreaker moment of getting that start of the call and the user will ask you a question around it. It'll, it'll get a chuckle or something. It just, you know, talk about building trust and kind of that relationship build. It, it really helps. It was never intended, Frank. It was just like, let's do something fun and have virtual backgrounds in the service. Honestly, we, we didn't have a huge, like, let's do this for sales. So you can have a cool icebreaker, but that's kind of what it's translated to for the most part. It's been a huge game changer for us. So little things like that, yeah, can go a long way to help improve the interaction. Oh, and I started out the call earlier with nine out of 10 buyers that I speak to executives always ask, are you on a boat? Yeah. <laughs> right? and it is the perfect icebreaker, right? To be able to showcase. And I love this one. I show up to a meeting and I turn I have video turned on. The other person shows up, they all of a sudden see themselves on video and they freak out and then they cover the video up and they're, you know, holding their hand and then they end up turning it off. Right. Right. But here's the best part I love it, which is as soon as they do that, I'm like, Greg, I already saw what you look like. I already saw you with your hair not combed, right? (laughs) You got to come back on video now. And you know, about half of the buyers will turn, oh, fine, okay, right, I'm in right, my right. sweats, I'm in my pajamas, whatever, right? So, okay, you want me to put my pajamas on? I'll put my pajamas on too, right? But that is just a huge relationship builder. And it's really a way to stand out from the crowd from a seller's perspective. Well, listen, I've had just an amazing time talking about how you guys have put together a phenomenal winning culture to grow and scale. And I think a lot of leaders are going to resonate well with some of the topics that we've talked about here, Greg. But what I want to do is, is a couple of questions I got for you. If someone wants to reach out to you, maybe they want to connect with you or just reach out to get more information about who the real Greg Holmes is. Yeah. Are you on Twitter? Are you on LinkedIn? Do they email you? What's the best way to reach you? I am on Twitter, but I frankly, I'm not a huge Twitterer. Tweeter, Twitter, yeah, see. Tweeter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, LinkedIn's always a great way. I'm, I'm active there. My email is greg.homes at zoom.us. So probably those two. I, like the cell phone, like trying to call me, it's tough these days. I'm usually Zooming or on email or on LinkedIn. So those are probably the best ways to get, get in touch. I got one final question for you, my friend, and that is your all-time favorite movie. What is it? All-time favorite. All right, let's see here. I think I'd have to go with Shawshank Redemption. I love that. I love that movie. You know, usually, too, you can kind of get the combo. It's usually on TNT, and right before it or right after it is Roadhouse. And, you know, I can roll with a little Roadhouse. Watch that, like, for the 15th time as well. <laughs> so you get sort of get the surprise double combo there. But, yeah, Shawshank Redemption, that's kind of been my longstanding favorite. I'm looking for another one to knock it off. But, um right. Fantastic. Greg, it's been great having you on Selling with Social. Thank you, my friend, for taking the time to really provide your thought leadership to the sales community about how to grow and develop a winning sales culture and company culture at that because we spent some good time talking about that. So I appreciate you taking the time to join me. Hey, Mara. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And like I said, I love what you guys are doing, just uh, helping people engage in a whole new way. So keep up the great work there. And uh, Yeah. Hope to see you soon virtually or or maybe back in natural Tahoe someday soon. We will. Absolutely. Stay tuned, y'all, for this message next. All right. Take care.
Don't forget to join Vangresso and hundreds of sales leaders from around the globe, April 3rd through the 5th, 2018 in Chicago for the 10th annual AAISP Leadership Summit. To receive your deeply discounted rate, visit bit.ly forward slash AAISP 2018. That's bit.ly forward slash AAISP 2018. And use the code LEADERSHIP1095 at registration for an amazing Vengresso only discount. Thanks so much for joining me on that episode of Selling with Social. I hope you found as much value in that episode as I did. Here's what I want you to do next. Please go to www.vengresso.com. That's V-E-N-G-R-E-S-O.com. V-E-N-G-R-E-S-O.com. So.com. And make sure that you get access to our content. We've got the latest and greatest in digital sales, sales training, content marketing, and social selling strategies that are going to help you grow your sales pipeline. I look forward to having you on the next show of Selling with Social. Make sure you also go to vengresso.com forward slash podcast to be able to get access to the latest and greatest Selling with Social episodes, along with any of the other episodes that we've got from Social Business Engines with my friend and partner, Bernie Borges. Thanks again for joining on Selling with Social.